One of the great things about microbrands is just the sheer variety of designs that are out there. Yet even with that, there still seems to be some unwritten rules or guidelines most brands follow. Rules regarding case shape, symmetry, branding, those kinds of things. And then there's Brew, who evidently didn't get that memo. And especially with their Metric Chrono, because with its square case shape, subtle branding, asymmetrical design, it does its own thing. Now this review is long overdue. I actually bought this one a while ago because a friend recommended it. In fact, it's been so long that a number of new versions have been introduced since I bought this one. Versions that seem to take this design in completely different directions. But with this version of the metric, I honestly wasn't sure about it when it showed up. Yet every time I put it on, I started liking it a little bit more. And in the long run, I can definitively say that Brew has created an unusual, awkwardly awesome watch. So let's start things off with the specs. With this TV-ish shaped case, Brew went 36 millimeters wide with a lug to lug of 46.5. Total thickness is a slim 10.75, which includes both a flat sapphire crystal, as well as a case back secured with screws. It's also powered by Seiko VK68 movement, that hybrid-y mecha quartz movement, which gives you the best of both worlds. The reliability of quartz paired with the feel and responsiveness of a mechanical. At this point, you've probably all heard of it. And the pushers feel great compared to a straight quartz chrono. Now, water resistance here is a disappointing 50 meters. And honestly, that's one of my few criticisms with the metric. Realistically, 50 meters is livable, but it's a fantastic sports chrono, and 100 meters would be much more fitting. Well, maybe that wasn't my only criticism, because lug width here is officially 19.85 millimeters. So it's sort of in between 19 and 20. Bottom line though, your 20 millimeter straps won't work. So if you get this one and you wanna try it on a leather strap, which I highly recommend, you're gonna have to mix things up and get a few 19s. And I gotta say, it's also a tad confusing why they just didn't go with a 20 millimeter lug width. As the bracelet already flares out a little bit, so would another millimeter really kill the design? I honestly don't know. But what I do know is that on the wrist, this thing is fantastic. I love the look, love the bracelet, and on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I think this is just about the perfect size for a square watch, at least on my wrist. It just seems to have the perfect balance between wrist presence, readability, and comfort. Now, these days, this is a pretty unusual design, but Brew took inspiration from the Speedmaster 125 which Omega released back in the 70s. So you can kind of consider this a little bit of a retro homage. But it's an homage in the good way, the pure way, where they were inspired by the key shape and the asymmetrical dial design and then went their own way with it. And there are multiple aspects to the design here that I absolutely love, starting with the case design. As square cases go, this one is fairly streamlined and straightforward. It's almost entirely brushed, which solidifies this as something more casual, more sporty, and more durable when it comes to micro scratches. The exception of that is a very slim polished chamfer, helping to highlight the overall case shape. And this larger, highly polished flat frame mirror thing surrounding the dial, which is a bit odd at first, but the way they did it is genius. Since it's underneath the crystal, it's protected from smudges as well as scratches. Yet it still adds a touch of flash to an otherwise tooly design. And in that way, it winds up drawing your eyes right towards the dial, which is really the true star of this show. Now, there are multiple colorways available, and some have a very different feel than this one. But this more colorful retro version was the one that initially grabbed me as it's colorful and playful without being too over the top and flashy, which may be a little unusual when you're talking retro 70s. And the color here isn't just for show, but it actually helps with the usability of the watch as well, as the vibrant orange second hand pops against the black dial, as well as the yellow tips of the minute and hour hand. Even the orange segments of the sub dial seem to help its readability when you're trying to read minutes elapsed. And then down at the bottom, we have this yellow section of the chapter ring. That's not completely random. This brew is made up by coffee aficionados, and that's actually supposed to represent the optimal brewing time for an espresso. 
not that that really helps me, but it's kind of cool that it's there. I also love that it's missing a sub dial, which I know sounds kind of odd, but hear me out. Generally, people love Seiko's Mecha Quartz movements, as it really does give you the best of both worlds. Yet, the one exception to that is the 24 hour sub dial that, for whatever reason, Seiko keeps putting on their chronographs. Seriously, I've lost count how many comments I've read where people talk about how much they hate it, yet I've never once heard anyone say they like it. And if you look up the VK68 movement Brew is using here, it also has that 24 hour sub dial at the 3. However, unlike most brands, Brew said no. They looked at it, said it was stupid, no one likes it, we're not going to deal with it, and just left it off. And I applaud them for that. Plus, it winds up giving the metric that unusual asymmetrical design, which they were going for. And lastly, another great thing here is just the subtlety of the logo. If you take a close look at the three, you should barely be able to make out Brew's coffee bean logo, gently etched into the dial. As I said, it's pretty subtle. And that's a pretty unusual thing to do in the watch business. Most brands want it known that this is their watch. Yet again, Brew doesn't really seem to care. And there's kind of an unusual confidence in that. And it shows that for Brew, it's all about letting the design stand on its own. And in some ways, it is a bit of a risk. On a normal dial, doing this might make it look a little bit generic. But with this one, this really isn't a normal looking dial. And in the end, I really like that they did it. Now, there are a lot of other good things here as well, like the applied indices, the good amount of depth, the design, as well as that color matched eight wheel, which may be in a bit of an odd position, but I think it works and that positioning has more to do with the limitations of the movement. But those are the major things that really stood out to me over the course of owning it. Now, some of the other colorways, like say the gold version, may have a bit of a different personality. But in the end, I think they all share the same great design. One that strikes a good balance. It's interesting and unique, yet not overbearing in its presence. It has a complicated chaotic dial, yet one that's also very readable. And initially, I thought the lack of symmetry here with the design would bug me. And honestly, it did for a little bit but I quickly got used to it. And in the end, it's one of the things I love about it. Now, there is that subpar water resistance and that 19 millimeter lug width. But other than those things, I don't really have any criticisms here. This one has completely won me over. In fact, I originally bought it with the idea that I was gonna review it and then immediately sell it, but it wound up being a keeper. Now, loom wise, it is a little bit of a mixed bag. The dial's pretty good, but I wish the hands were a little bit better. I mean, it's no Seiko Diver, but it's not necessarily a slouch either. As usual, I'd love it if it had more loom. But overall, for the type of watch it is, and considering the limited surface area of the design, I'd say it's okay. As for the bracelet, well, other than that 19mm size, it's fantastic. Nice milled clasp with four micro adjusts and good solid links with an amazingly aggressive taper. It has a very interesting 70s style look, one you don't see very often. It reminds me of those elastic, stretchy metal bands I used to see as a kid. But here it's not stretchy and it's done to a much higher degree of quality. More importantly though, it works with the case design and it's extremely comfortable. That aggressive taper and really short links helps it to conform to your wrist as it wraps around. So fantastic bracelet, and the only thing I might change would be to add a quick release system to the end links. Just for those days where you want to mix things up, because this thing is a surprising strap monster. Now when these are in stock, they're selling for 450 US. And from the last Jack Mason review, which was their Avigator Chrono at 419, I know a lot of you are going to think that's way too much for a Mecha Quartz Chrono. However, just like that Jack Mason review, I got to compare this to what else I'm seeing in the market. And when I look at microbrand watches from all over the spectrum, watches from Dan Henry, Vario, Helm, Stratton, Brew, and Jack Mason, I'm seeing that a good Mecha Quartz chronograph is going to run between 300 to 500 bucks. So while it may seem high compared to where things were a while ago, when you consider the unusual nature of the design and that everything here is bespoke for it, there's no standard components used, I think that price is reasonable. Bottom line, it's an awkwardly awesome watch, which 
I know I said earlier, but I think it deserves repeating because that's the best way to describe this one. It's vibrant, it's fun, it's functional, and well-made. This is the type of watch that creates people who obsess about microbrands, who want something a little bit different, but is still well-made. And perhaps the most glowing thing I can say about it is that my wife likes it. These days, she's so used to me trying on a different watch every day, she never says anything about them. But I was trying this one on a leather strap for the first time, and she noticed it. She said, you've had that one for a while. I like it. You should keep it. I was like, all right, I guess I am. So again, awkwardly awesome watch and highly recommended. It. It's become one of my favorite Mecha Quartz watches out there. But as usual, let me know what you think about it down below, as well as what do you think about the new automatic version. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.